In our quest for a function which was its own derivative, we met e to the x. Remember, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. What's the inverse function for e to the x? What function undoes that sort of exponentiation? Well, we don't really have a name for that function yet, so we're just going to call it log. So in symbols, if e to the x is equal to y, then log y equals x. Right, log is the inverse function for e to the. Log of something tells me what I must raise e to to get back the thing I plugged into log. These logs, or logarithms, are super important for a ton of reasons. Take a look at this. Since e to the x plus y is e to the x times e to the y, right, this is a property of exponents, if you like, there's a corresponding statement about log. Log of a times b is log of a plus log of b. Or a shorthand way to say that is that logarithms transform products into sums. This is a big reason why we care so much about logs. Once we've got this new function, log, we can ask, what's the derivative of log? So if f of x is e to the x, the inverse function is log. If I want to now differentiate log, I can use the inverse function theorem. So the derivative of the inverse function is 1 over the derivative of the original function evaluated at the inverse function of x. Now the neat thing here is that the derivative of e to the x is itself. So f prime is just f, and I'm left with f of f inverse of x. It's e to the log of x. But uh, log of x tells me what I have to plug into e to get out the input, right? f of the inverse function of f is just going to be its, the same input again. So this is 1 over x. So the derivative of log x is just 1 over x. And you can really see this fact on the graph. Here's a graph of y equals log x. And I should warn you right off the bat that the x-axis and the y-axis have totally different scales. The x-axis goes from 1 to 100. The y-axis in this plot goes from 0 to 5. That's going to make it not so easy to tell the exact values of the slopes of tangent lines. But you can see from this graph the important qualitative feature, that the graph is getting less and less slopey. I mean, if you like, it's flattening out as the input gets bigger. All right, if I put down a tangent line and I start moving the point that I'm taking the tangent line at to the right, you can see the tangent line slope is getting closer and closer to 0. And of course, that's reflected by knowing the derivative of log x is 1 over x. So if x is really big, the tangent line at x is really close to 0 in slope. Think about log of a really big number. For instance, what's log of a million? A log of a million is about 13.815510. And of course, it keeps going. It's an irrational number. But now the derivative of log right, is 1 over its input. So what does that tell you that you might think log of a million and 1 is equal to? Well, the derivative tells you how much wiggling the input affects the output. So if I wiggle the input by 1, you expect the output to change by about the derivative. And yeah, uh, log of a million and 1 is about 13.815511. Right? What's being affected here is in the millionths place after the decimal point. Right? It's the sixth digit after the decimal point because it's being affected like a change of one over a million. Right? I'm changing the output by about a millionth. At this point, we can also handle logs with other bases. So let's suppose I want to differentiate log of x base b. Right? This is the number that I'd raise b to to get back x. Well, there's a change of base formula for log. This is the same as the derivative of, say, the natural log of x over the log of b. But the log of b is a constant. And the derivative of a constant multiple is just that constant multiple times the derivative. So this is 1 over log b times the derivative of here the natural log of x. But I know the derivative of the natural log of x. It's 1 over x. So the derivative of log of x base b is 1 over log b times 1 over x. Or maybe another way to write this would be 1 over x times log b, if you prefer writing it that way. e to the x is a sort of key that unlocks how to understand the derivative of a ton of other exponential functions. For example, 
Now that we know how to differentiate e to the x, we can also differentiate 2 to the x. So let's suppose I want to differentiate 2 to the x. Now you might just memorize some formula for differentiating this, but it's easier, I think better, to just recreate this function out of the functions that you already know all the derivatives of. So in this case, let's replace 2 by e to the log 2 to the x. Right? So instead of writing 2 here, I've just written e to the log 2. This is just 2. But now I've got e to the log 2 to the x, and that's the same as e to the log 2 times x. And now this is a composition of functions that I know how to differentiate. I know how to differentiate e to the, and I know how to differentiate a constant multiple times x. So by the chain rule, it's the derivative of the outside function, so which is itself e to the, at the inside function, which is log 2 times x, times the derivative of the inside function, which in this case is log 2 times x. So I'm just going to multiply by log 2. Now I could kind of make this look a little bit nicer, right? Uh, e to the log 2 times x, well, that's just 2 to the x times, again, log 2. So the derivative of 2 to the x is 2 to the x times log 2. And of course, 2 didn't play any significant role here. I could have replaced 2 by any other number, and I'd get the same kind of formula. What I hope you're seeing is that all of the derivative laws are connected. With practice, you'll be able to differentiate any function that you build by combining our standard library of functions and operations on those functions.